The tale of Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne is a magnificent adventure, but it is believed to have been inspired by George Francis Train, a rich, eccentric American entrepreneur who, having amassed himself a fortune of no less than $30 million, three times journeyed around the world. His first attempt was in 1870. He travelled around the world in 80 days. Jules Verne's story was published in 1873. You can maybe see why dear Mr. Train thought Jules Verne had in fact turned him into his Phileas Fogg. But next it was the turn of Nellie Bly, sometimes called the mother of investigative journalism. Having made a name for herself with various articles, in 1888 she proposed to the newspaper editor of the New York World the idea which would make her immortal. The following year, on the 14th of November 1889, with only two days notice, she embarked on the adventure of a lifetime. Here was a lone woman in 1889 recreating the journey of Phileas Fogg, or George Francis Train if we're honest. Either way, it was nothing short of sensational. Better yet, on hearing of it, the rival New York newspaper The Cosmopolitan sent forth its own female reporter, one Elizabeth Bisland, to race around the world and beat Miss Bly. Nellie Bly travelled on steamboats and steam trains and made frequent use of the global telegraph system to send back reports to her newspaper whilst still finding time to meet Jules Verne in Amiens, to visit a leper colony in China, and to buy herself a pet monkey in Singapore. Nellie Bly completed her circumnavigation of the world by arriving back in New Jersey to jubilant crowds. She had beaten Phileas Fogg and managed it in fewer than 80 days. Incidentally, Elizabeth Bisland, her rival from the Cosmopolitan, arrived only four and a half days later, which would have been a world record of its own, had not Nellie Bly got there first, having gone around the world in 72 days. George Francis Train, however, was not going to be beaten by a bunch of women, and hence set out anew in 1890 to complete the journey in 67 days and 12 hours. In fact, a newspaper in Tacoma in the US state of Washington paid for the journey. The town was hoping for publicity. Better yet, in 1892, another town in the US state of Washington, then called Watcom but today known as Bellingham, offered to pay him for another around the world trip in the hope of putting itself on the map. And so Mr. Train went on his third and final journey, which he completed in 60 days. Just as Jules Verne had predicted, the world was shrinking fast. That's all from the Cyberpass for now. Thank you very much, and goodbye.